Good evening and welcome to the 50th episode of Board Chitless. My goodness. Ooh. Oh my goodness. Tonight we have uh, been playing a number of games, which we'll get to in a second. I'd also like to introduce one of our guests tonight, Anthony Etherington, my childhood D&D friend. Indeed. Is, is it okay to introduce you as that, Anthony? That, I, I will, that is just that acceptable, <laughs> yes. He's not just outed you as a uh, D&D player. <laughs> yeah. in, uh, from the past. A lot of people have been trying to hide that form for a long time, but never mind. <laughs> <laughs> Fully out of the closet now. <laughs> Anthony's come all the way from London to join us for a weekend of gaming, and we started tonight with Last Night on Earth. And, well, we played Splendour before that. We started tonight with Splendour. Was... And then after that, we had two epic sessions of Last Night on Earth. Mainly epic because I was the zombies. Mm-hmm. Yeah, shall we, shall we get straight, in, straight into Last Night on Earth? Shall we? Shall we? Yeah. Let's do oh, it. No, let's do Splendour. Okay, let's back Just to mix things up. Okay. Back, well, that was a nice little tease. <laughs> <laughs> Sort of set collection, gem collection, game for one to four people. It's all, no, it's not, is it? Two to four. Two to four. I'm going to let Anthony explain Can you play solo, Anthony? Uh, I've never tried to play solo, and I don't believe there's any mechanism which whereby you could. Um, no, it's very much a uh, kind of an abstract race game. I've played it at all player counts. Um, I guess I feel like it works probably best at two, um, simply because it's two or three. Four, it falls into that sl- trap slightly of four, maybe taking a smidge longer than it really needs to. Um, but at two or three, I think it really, it really kind of, it really kind of hums. So um, yeah, yeah. So it's a, I guess it's like an abstract engine builder kind of game. Yeah. So um, it's a victory points race, and it? it's first person exactly. you've got fifteen points, yeah. and you've got a array of twelve. Is it twelve cards to choose from? And Three yeah, rows of there's difficulty. yeah three, three three before so yeah so tw- uh, three different rows of difficulty um, with the uh, easier cards to purchase at the bottom and then the more powerful cards towards the top. This is telling. Um, I can't remember. Do the cards have names? No, no, no they're just pictures no. right, of a gem and a number of victory points. Yeah, I mean, unless you chose to name the cards yourself, <laughs> uh, based on some of the, uh, I think quite nice, but also rather bland and hard work. You christened one of them, didn't you? The like bewildered it? gem polisher. Bewildered yeah. gem polisher. Yeah, he was yeah. like, he was in a pose where he looked like he did. He, he knew he was meant to pose to look like he was doing something, but didn't know exactly what or why. So I don't know if that's like what the artist <laughs> intended or whether it's just because of the drudgery of the job. It, it didn't look like he was enjoying the gems by the end of it anyway. But yeah, he, you know, he served his purpose. The but art was an interesting mix. Some of it was really nice. Yeah, yeah it's, all, it's, all it's really nice. I think it's nice. I think it, 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 it's kind of nice, but as you said, slightly uninspiring. Yeah. Slightly uninspiring. The graphic design is quite uninspiring as well. The victory point is literally just a white font yeah. text. Yeah. But um, it, is, it is a very, like, it's a straightforward game and the graphic design serves that kind of perfectly. I found that with the artwork, the um, the more abstract the cards were, so, like, the lower tier decks especially, where it's, like, it's all, like, opal mines and, you know, vast deserts and winter tundras, they worked a lot better than the big close-ups of, like, some duke holding an emerald up. Right. But the emerald that he was holding was one victory point and gave you rubies. So it's like, what, what, what? Hang, hang on. Yeah, it's it's really odd. I mean, I think to be honest, we're almost trying to uh, plaster on more than this. This <laughs> really deserves. I'm I'm sure me and my wife have played this game a dozen times before we even registered to us that the different levels were meant to be slightly different steps <laughs> along the, the yeah. gem journey. Yeah, yeah. Um, it, it is it is kind of yeah token at best. I There's think. some yeah. arbitrary leader type cards at the top as well, aren't they? Like this was King, Henry VIII is one of them, and you can sort of collect them if you have enough yeah. gems. Is, is any of that explained away? <laughs> Is the like flavour explaining it? Or... Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, uh, I, I believe it's a long time since I read it and I ignored it, but it was straight away. But um, I believe that as you become a more and more powerful and respected gem merchant, you are more likely to get visited by Henry VIII. Got you. Okay, that makes sense. Which I think makes perfect sense. Mm. Yeah. 
Yeah, he's, you know, he's a, he's a very powerful customer. <laughs> you can get him on side. <laughs> Lots of respect. Felt a bit like Love Letter in that respect, didn't it? After the first game you play of it, you don't actually care that you're trying to sneak the princess a lot of love. You're just trying to collect Matching numbers and, and little yeah. cubes. It's got those yeah. nice chits as well, so you're collecting the sort of uh, poker chip yes. uh, gem And they're lovely, w- lovely way to, aren't sure, they? Sure, they're a lovely way. They're lovely kind of tactile things, yeah. I think. Um, so they're the resources, and you're using them to pay for the cards... The cards give you rich points, but they can also some cards give you resources as well. Yeah. So then you buy bigger cards, and it's just a very simplistic engine yeah. builder, which I completely failed to master. <laughs> well, and came behind all of you. And uh, in fact, Raphael was second place, wasn't he? After you, yeah. I think, Anthony. Yeah, yeah, he was. Um, it's it, it 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 is a game where you play a little bit more, and you start to kind of build up the um, uh, they're, gonna, they're gonna I guess the flow of the of the race and and how to maximize your efficiency, which yeah. is what it's all about. Um, but though we will enjoy it, I think um, it is a great gateway uh, um, to bringing other people in. Uh, you can rattle through three or four games in in an hour or so um, if you're uh, once you really kind of start going at it. And uh, and and for me, that, that that's perfect. And it's been really good. And it's incredibly portable. I put it down from London on the train, um, and that it's quite a big box that it comes in, but it squeezes down into quite a small space. <laughs> it's a little deck box, isn't it? Um, yeah, it was just a couple of Tupperware boxes, um, which uh, is good. Is good when uh, um, you uh, we've played it on the train, we've played it in the hospital, we've played it in kind of a lot of different places, and it lands itself well to that. Excellent, yeah, it's a really fun game, and it also um, it ramps up, doesn't it? After a couple of turns, everyone feels like you should be on the second deck, and yeah. then before you know it. Someone's running away with 15 points. Yeah. It just ends at the right time. You've got to keep an eye on what everyone else is up to. Try and work out what um, cards. You can reserve cards from like the market deck in the middle. So you have to think, oh, Anthony's just picked up that diamond card. That's pretty high value. I need to try and remember to block him from getting rubies. But then you get fixated on your own hand and forget about that and let him get all the rubies. And then he wins. But it's just, it's just a nice game. Um, and you always feel like you're a little bit behind, which is... Quite a good thing. It's yeah. that feeling of jeopardy. You always feel like, am I going to make the right decision here? Yeah, you said that while we were playing, it feels like everybody else is doing more than you on a given turn. <laughs> does, and I think yeah. everybody has that feeling, you know, like looking around the table, you're like, ah, oh, they've got so much more stuffs. And yeah. And I think it comes to the fact that you can only do one thing on a go. So it feels like you, um, you, you're, you're ha- always having to make a decision between doing something that's kind of moving you forward or just taking taking more more into your hand and and that feels like the rounds I mean the rounds whistle oh they rattle by yeah. um, uh, but it always feels like you want to do a little bit more on your turn um, and, and I think things like the inclusion of the uh, of the nobles cards that can yeah. give you a, a points boost uh, mean that it can really kind of ramp up quickly and, and you can really you can really accelerate and uh, yeah. Yeah, that's one of the, the beauties of the game yeah you have to be um, careful don't you because at one point I noticed Tristan was, had so many resource cards out that he was yep. just eating up resource cards as they come out on the market. And I thought, oh my God, he's, he's scoring victory points just literally by sitting there and waiting for them to come out and gobbling them up. And then it wasn't until the end of the game that I actually realised that he just built up a load of free resource cards. With no victory a, points. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. and built up the victory points. And that must have like just not really cost you too many resources, but cost you a lot of turns. Yeah, I blame it on having to look after Sam's baby. Most yeah, of the I definitely blame Sam. <laughs> <laughs> and, and just I guess, on, on the flip side of that, one thing that I thought Raphael embodied quite, quite really nicely was he was really focused on building up all his chips to buy one card that he yes. had in mind, in mind, but it's it's actually, I think, far more of a tactical and strategic game. You have to, especially with four people, the card tableau changes so dramatically in between, your, in between goes yeah. that you really have to flex and you really have to just use your gems to buy things you weren't really planning on buying. Sort of reacting. Just yeah, so nice. you can keep your keep your engine going and you can keep stacking it up. It does have that Although nice what, method where you can bag your card though into your hand. Yeah. You take one yeah. resource and you pick that card and save it for later, uh, which is kind of a waste of a move, but it also buys you that security that you are actually going to be able to play something yeah. Yeah. rather than just sort of get yourself into a mess where you've got the wrong resources or yeah. Yeah. cards. Yeah, I noticed I really struggled. I wasn't really um, saving up any of the sort of emerald cards, like the green ones. And all of a sudden, the market got flooded with all these quite expensive emerald cards. And I was like, oh, why why didn't I start saving these? It's absolutely useless. So I couldn't quite react quick enough then. Yeah, and there are, it's it's a nice game for like putting out moments like that and just kind of really like pushing you back a little bit and making you really think about what you're going to do next and how you're going to change your strategy. I think it's very simplistic, it's very basic, but it does yeah. move along at a clip and it doesn't outstay its welcome. 
Um, I did find myself a little bit hankering for more player agency, more options. And I think in terms of set collection games, um, it did make me think I'd, I'd probably rather be playing something like Seven Wonders, yeah. mm-hmm. which still moves along at a pace, but has a little bit more depth. And and you kind of get a feel for what you're actually doing. You know, you're building a civilization sure. and you're bringing mm. cards that sort of make sense. I think you're right when you mentioned Love Letter. I think it's at that sort of level of s- simplicity, really. Yeah. And, and, and great for new players, people who haven't played many games, a brilliant way to bring them in because there's not much to think about, really. Mm-hmm. There's, you've got your four options in a turn. Away you go. I don't know if it's a great game. I don't know if I'd be inclined to want to play it again, <laughs> necessarily. And I'm glad to have played it. Sure. Because it's one of those ones that has a huge sort of following and it's like it was super buzzing on board game geek yeah, and stuff. Yeah. So it's, it's great been, to sort of tick it off. It's been popular since it was released. Really. Yeah, hugely popular. And I think that simplicity is that you describe is key to that. Like you see, you can play mm. four games in an hour with two people. and right. Absolutely. And I really don't think you can underestimate the the value of having those really tactile chips. I think that yeah. I read somewhere someone saying that this half the copies sold because of those chips and that might not be yeah. too far off the truth <laughs> uh, because they do. it is great. They are great to play with. Yeah. They look great on the table and... I think that's a that, that that's a kind of maybe superficial, yeah. but I think really important yeah. element. You mentioned some success. expansions as well. Indeed, so. there is a, an, exp- an expansion box. Uh, I think it's called Cities of Splendor, um, and it's kind of, one thing. I think what they've done is quite a nice thing. There, we've only kind of had a couple of goes with all of them, but um, there are four. Well, I guess what they call mini expansions, and they are just that. I mean, um, there is maybe one side of instructions for each one, and they all add just a little something. To the game, uh, one adds a little bit more interaction. Um, one adds just some extra cards that do slightly different uh, different things. Um, another couple, one adds like a kind of a time track, which I think just delays the game longer than it needs to. Um, but the nice thing about them is they're designed so that they are, are standalone. So rather than I guess this kind of expansions where it's just throw everything at it and make my game bigger and yeah, bigger yeah. and bigger, um, it, it is purposely designed so that it's just like it's a little twist, a little twist, give a little sense of invigoration yeah. to a game that basically we all, we know already works. I don't know how much they really add. We kind of play with them some of the time, um, but uh, but yeah, I think it's a nice touch. I think it certainly gives a, a little bit more, maybe of that of that of that weight to it that you're talking about. But it, it remains obviously a very a very light game. Yeah, zhuzh it up a little bit. Zhuzh it up, getting bored. Nice, nice. Yeah, well, I think it's um, it's definitely got a you know, there's a lot of room for this game to come out in that little pocket of time when you do not have time for like a full yeah. game, sixty minute game. Yeah, play something twenty minutes or like. It, it took us about 30 seconds to pick up the rules for this one. It's it's not a difficult game to take on. It's, it was one of those, I suppose, easy to pick up, difficult to master, you know. By the time you've worked out all the different ways that you can yeah. beat all your mates, it's time to move on to the next game. Like, yeah, we really enjoyed it. That's Thanks good. very much for bringing it. Was you? Yeah, it was all right. Good. Well, <laughs> high praise yeah. indeed. <laughs> for, for, like, for this sort of a family game, though, that's like massive praise. <laughs> <laughs> Usually just sits there thinking, well, we could be playing Mage Knight. Oh my god. And the second game we were playing this evening was Last Night on Earth um, with the Growing Hunger expansion. So it's an, a merry trash tactical zombie fighter game we've got loads of different scenarios in there we played two of them tonight mainly because tristan was a very effective zombie horde and sure. murdered us me and sam and anthony within about 30 seconds of starting we had to find four of the townspeople in the town i managed to find none we didn't find any did we? no we didn't find any at all so um, but we did get two people killed this is it's very much a B movie type game. This is the one yes. loads of people recognise. Came out in two thousand and seven, so it's it's been around for ages. And it's all like photographs of actors and the designers' friends and stuff by the Flying Frog guys. And you're recreating a zombie movie in a small town, really small scale zombie movie. It's not like mm. Dead of Winter where there's hundreds of zombies. There's a, there's I think twelve no fourteen zombies. At any given point, like if you're lucky as the zombie player, it's like, wow, I've got all 14 <laughs> on the board. Um, and yeah, so you you as the heroes are playing the stereotype sort of jock, prom queen, sheriff, running around town, trying to gather resources and not get eaten by zombies. Yeah. So as you say, the first scenario is find the townsfolk. And how many did you find? 
Zero. Um, there is there is a huge crapshoot element to this game yeah. where you are fishing through a gigantic deck of hero cards to try and find these townsfolk, and we because it might be because we had all the expansion cards thrown in there, <laughs> but yeah, they they are few and far between. And yeah, it, the, yeah, it's the, bit, it did feel very much like looking for a needle in a haystack, yeah. and uh, and we didn't find one of the four needles we were looking for. Yeah. There, there was a get out clause for me though, which is all I had to do was murder two heroes, which isn't that difficult for given that you'd have to survive maybe 15 hours yeah. and yeah. find and keep alive four townsfolk it can happen in a flash it in was fact, a tall ask this was probably my third game of last night on earth the last time i played was a number of years ago and i seem to remember our session then panned out almost exactly the same <laughs> that we had one game where we just the zombie player just annihilated yeah. it the team, and it was it was over before it began. Yeah. Um, and then one that was uh, really tight and really really good. Yeah. We didn't show the zombies the respect they deserved, did we? Really? We put, I don't I don't know if we were keeping too much of a distance, so if we just lingered too much. We we tried to search the buildings, but if we tried to stay in the same buildings for too long, but then it, it's a sort of game where if you let yourself, you can just spend the whole time just running away from zombies and achieving nothing. Sure. Really. Sure. We seem to do both that and also manage to get, get eaten. eaten. Yeah. Um, but but yeah, yeah. It, the first game was very much a learning game. Let's it was, yeah, yeah. And so, there's a lot of there's a lot of old school mechanics in here, like rolling to move, sure. and yeah, you either move or you search. Which um, because yeah, because goes go by pretty quickly. It's not too devastating, but it can be annoying as hell if you're a hero and you roll and you don't make it into a building. So you literally just move a couple of spaces. With four of us playing tonight, you guys had two heroes extra. No, one hero we had extra. One extra, we yeah. Had one, yeah, one floating hero. A floating hero. So Indeed. You, you always felt like you had something to do, I guess. Sure. Um, and yeah. you had a few options in that. Uh, but you, it does definitely come down to the look of the dice and the, the card draw and how you manage yeah. those. Um, I think... It could probably do with a house rule. There probably is actually in one of the expansions. There might be a house rule where all the heroes move four spaces instead of having to roll or something. Yeah, I, I mean, I could see it the way. I would say in the second game we played, I thought the the movement, random as it was, added. It was all about the movements. Yeah. In, our, in the second game, I and, actually, yeah, I and don't actually, mind I, it in this no. game for some reason. I think it's because of the lightness of the theme. Mm. You know, it doesn't. It, um, I think like you compared it to a miniatures skirmish battle. One of you did. I mean, so Sam, yeah, just like a, almost like a miniatures war game. The way you move yeah. tactically around the grid, yeah, yeah. with uh, like kiting the zombies and stuff. But because of the the light theme and the fact that something anything can happen to you, yeah. you know, with a flip of a card, yeah, I don't really mind it as much. And I, I remember this as the heroes as well. If my heroes die, it's kind of fun. You know, they yeah. go out in stupid ways and stuff, yeah. and you've got these great exploding zombies, zombies with pitchforks, you know, heroes swinging baseball bats and, um, what did you have, like a skateboard? And I, a, oh, you had no, the pitchfork. I had, I had the pitchfork yeah. and the let's rock um, double threat. Evil combo. Yeah, so um, I could re-roll any of my dice. You were the strange victor outsider. I was, I was the crazy psychopath criminal <laughs> yeah. that could murder all the zombies, but I, yeah, so we ended up in this really weird situation where I could roll high because he had about four dice. Um, but then I could just re-roll all the other dice that I didn't need and hope to get a double just to This was in the second scenario, off. wasn't it? Second so scenario. so we, had, we had the townsfolk one. That sort of crapped out pretty quickly. It was, King, it, was about, yeah. it was about half an hour, I think, at least, before it, it might have seemed like it was shorter, but... It did seem shorter, but... <laughs> um, we got a decent play out of that, and then yeah, the, yeah. the second one we did was... So 20 the minutes of the half an hour was setting up the board. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and remembering the rules. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then the, the second scenario, was, which was the meat of the gaming tonight, which took about two hours, was defend the manor, where yeah. you guys had to defend the manor, and I had to get nine zombies through the walls yeah. into the manor to win. And again, the sort of secondary win condition was kill four heroes in 17 yeah. turns. And from this, from the get go, that felt a lot more like thematically and the way the game played. That was a lot more fun. Yeah, yeah. like it, it felt was a lot like more balanced. Had, yeah, it, we had a better objective. It didn't matter if we if we were searching too much. We were after weapons, but we could kind of just get started straight away. And I think the fact that we had four heroes before we died took out that sweetness yes. in it that I I think I've seen other times when you've only got two to kill, which no, it, it can be over a high and a heartbeat in yeah, that sense yeah. because they say killing, killing two relatively weak heroes is is not a huge task. Yeah. Whereas this allowed us to be a lot more, 
I guess, tactical about who we put in the firing rate, yeah. line, which was essential. Who we sacrificed. Yeah. And who we kind of held back and made sure. And, and uh, you, there's a little bit of kind of, I guess, pre-planning and pre-programming you can do that you know how far the zombie's going to come, so you can do that. Yeah. The um, the board layout seemed to be a lot kinder as well the second time around. So the buildings that were on offer the first time, I think we had access to like a garage and the gun shop and a grocery store. Whereas the second time around, there was like a weird sort of mini mall. So there's an antique yeah. shop, there's a library. Yeah, there we, we have all the expansions market. in there. So there's all the, the extra boards from Growing Hunger yeah. and, and all the extra stuff thrown in. So yeah, so but it does all, mix it up quite a bit. Yeah, so instead of searching, we had um, various pickup locations. So um, the library could just rinse the hero deck for an event if you needed one or there was the antique store so you could burn three um cards and then just draw two and pick the best one but then the gr the supermarket across the road from that meant that you could then just pick up any two cards from the discard pile so you could just murder the hero deck from the um from one location and then pick up all the juicy stuff from the next but i don't think we actually did that because i think we've got all our best cards oh. pretty much straight away well i was going to make that point the other thing that kind of set us on the right foot was we just drew, drew good cards to <laughs> <with>. yeah <laughs> i mean it had a little bit of that you're all of, tooled up yeah you? we were yeah, tooled, it had weapons. a little bit of that thing that i guess you get in games like arkham horror where you know, you get your random cards at the start yeah. and you can be incredibly tanked up by the time you start or you can just you could be halfway to losing the game yeah. in the first round. Yeah, you um, had two lots of dynamite and a lighter within the first yeah. couple of turns. <laughs> yeah, I had an ammo belt of dynamite <laughs> and then a lighter to get that going um, and and a skateboard. Um, uh, so so yeah, I, I, but all of which I thought kind of set the balance of the game. So you kind of felt yeah. like you were going to be in it. The, you know, there was there was going to be a little bit of give and take here, and you could commit yeah. to this in a way that you know, you weren't fearing instant death you know, from, from from the first moment, which I thought let me have fun. I really, one of the things I really love about this game is um, you know what's happening from turn to turn. So we, yeah. we just talked about the abstract game Splendor. Last week we talked about um, legendary and deck building and how sort of that can be thematically abstract a little bit as well. In this, you know exactly what you're doing. You're, if you're a hero, you're running for help and you're searching for weapons and you're hitting zombies with baseball bats. There's there's no deeper no. sort of message. There's sure. no hidden sort of sure. agenda. It's just it's fun and um and I was worried actually when I when I said because I did suggest it and I always remember having fun with this game. But it is a couple of years since we played it and I was worried that it was going to go down like a like a lead balloon because the mechanics are dated and it could have if we'd have played two games like the first game you know back to back party wipes I think that could have been really it could have jaded everybody on it very quickly. Yeah, leave, leave a bit of a sour note. Yeah, um, sure. and I think if we had a picture another scenario, I think one of you said don't do escape in the but, truck because it's yeah, the same it's one where you're fishing yeah, for the gasoline just, and if you yeah. don't get it, the heroes lose sort of thing. And It's a sort, it's a sort of basic beginner level um, campaign, isn't it? Yeah. But because of that, We've done that the two previous times I've played the game. So it's like... <laughs> I ain't doing I think, that again. Yeah, yeah. I was like, I'll still have fun, but I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure I know what to do. So let's yeah. just check some else. I'm so glad that we did. And yes. I'm even more yeah. glad that we persevered for the mansion. Definitely. I mean, and there's so, there's so much more complex scenarios in there as well. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I mean, I would go as far as saying that it was that, it was the mansion. It was the... The kind of yeah. the, the tactical movement around that that made the game for yeah. me. Yeah. Uh, like luring because, the zombies away yeah. from it by playing Ab on their hunger and Absolutely that. Absolutely that. I I guess I had the same concerns. I don't think I've played this video. I've I've played um what's the other one called by the same company, Touch of Evil. Oh yeah. Yeah. Um uh, and yeah, and, and I I kind of had slight reservations about it being very much like that. For me, the mansion setup and and uh, I, as you say, there's more complex ones that incorporate some of that. I thought that really made it, and uh, um, yeah, that turned it from um, just being a, you know, a, a dice chucking uh, work to actually being a you know, a really kind of interesting tactical puzzle. Yeah, yeah, that yeah, is, and and more so than you might think, given all the rolling for moving sure. and you yeah, know, the cards that are coming out. And from the zombie point of view, from the zombie player point of view, you've got a deck of cards, and you get if you play them all down, you can get another four cards every turn. And they can range from having a zombie move slightly further forward to having a game-changing effect. So yeah. by the end of the game, there are a bunch of stuff in. You know, some guys were getting hysterical. Some of the heroes were getting hysterical or weirded out. Yeah. The rain had started pouring down, so movement was reduced outside. And there's all these kinds of really sort of thematic happenstances you can put 
bickering if two heroes are on the same space you get that classic moment yeah. where the, yeah. the two hero two characters in a movie are just like arguing or whatever or you know the dreaded last night on earth card where if you get a boy and a girl in the same <laughs> room <laughs> you're like that's yeah. on and they're screwed over kind of thing yeah. um, and so it's brilliant that it has all those like quite hilarious beats and and I don't I, I don't ever feel like the winning or losing really matters you always play to win yeah. you sure. know whichever side you're on but um, I don't mind losing or winning as either side because of the tale that you get yeah. out of it, you know? Well, we, we lost again, didn't we, to the zombies, but it was on, there was two hours to go until sunrise. So two, and two it, turns yeah, left, two turns, yeah. yeah. And there was like, it was really on a knife edge. And we, I honestly thought we were going to sneak away with the win, but then you just kept throwing these really horrible um, zombie cards at me. And I've, the first one broke my pitchfork, and I thought, oh, that's the worst of it. And it's like, oh, no, I'm wounded. Oh, so that's me dead. But then it turns out you would have just instant killed me anyway. Just <laughs> decided to, in a very in a nice stroke of drama just to hold that one back till last, <laughs> just to give us all a little glimmer of hope, which is very nice of you. Well, there's, I mean, there was a few effects that relied on each other there, yeah. and it, it wouldn't have been an insta kill. Basically, there's a card where you can, I, if you get wounded in a fight, I play it on you and you're bitten. Yeah, and then the next time you get wounded, you t- you turn into a zombie hero. It's like a more powerful zombie. Um, but at that point, it wouldn't have mattered anyway because that was your yeah. that was your last hero uh, that we needed to to kill. But um, again, these great effects, you know, you're bitten and you're walking around with yeah. a bitten card. You're sure. like, and 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 it changes the environment. You know, you and Sam Sam had this really kick ass chef who had a big weapon and who was killing zombies <laughs> left, right, and centre. A broom. A broom. <laughs> broom. Oh, a broom. A broom. It was a and then, broom. And then and he had loads of health. He had like four health, where most characters have two. But after he started taking a few lumps, he ended up running off into the cornfields and hiding, yeah. which is absolutely tactically sound because if he'd have taken one more hit, you would have lost. Yeah, totally. So, so it had this sort of flip yeah. of like yeah. going from being cocky and like you know smashing up the zombies to running and hiding and searching. Yeah. And- my, and trying to balance all of that. I feel like my psycho criminal Victor should really have apologised <laughs> to all the other characters because when when you broke my, I had I had my pitchfork combo. He was having his entrails I was, ripped. I was up. basically murdering any zombie that entered the mansion, but then something went wrong. My pitchfork broke, so I thought, right, I'm going to run to the tool shed, pick up another pitchfork, and come back and kill everything. The lights went out, and I didn't realise exactly how much downtime running to the tool shed yeah. would actually accrue. The second I left. The zombies just kind of like returned as a massive horde outside the mansion. I managed to overwhelm one or two of the characters, and I thought if I just hung around, I probably would have helped just relieve them a yeah, little bit, and maybe the wounds, they wouldn't have got sorry. wounded so quickly. And, and maybe that's true, but in a game like you say, it doesn't necessarily matter too much if you win yeah. or lose. It it was nice. It was nice. It was nice to have your kind of your your your, your psycho ex con who stab me away at the pitch for it breaks. <laughs> And he just, just wanders off to see if he <laughs> yeah, can find yeah, another yeah. one. Um, <laughs> and then he comes back 20 minutes later and he's got one and we're all there. But it doesn't really... Yeah. You know, and, and I think there was some also really... You know, there was some really nice things in that that some of the cards brought up, which was we had some really nice kind of Hail, Mo- Hail Mary dice moments oh, there was, as well. There was a lot of skinny um, teeth action. Yeah, and, and I've got to say that having been you know, uh, playing a lot of games like like Splendor and stuff that that do have you know an element of luck yeah. and and it's great when it kind of comes through. It's not really what you're what you're playing for. Um, and I've missed that. I've missed that where you get those those real kind of those those dice moments and everyone is engaged in it. Everyone's focused in on it. Yeah. Um, and uh, and and yeah, some really kind of great moments that came off the back of that. And uh, I think both both sides and that that was really good. That was really that was I thought I yeah, it lent it. it, it, it it beats up, built, built up on that theme really well. Yeah. I think it helps that I've been watching Fear of the Walking Dead as well, and uh, <laughs> you're watching a bunch of unappealing characters, stereotypes, sure. waiting for them yeah. to get picked off, and it just seeged nicely from yeah. watching that to playing this and having the, the very similar experience. Mathically, it's on point, isn't it? It's like it, so. it, the, the, the cards all drive that narrative forward, and just stupid stuff happens that really like plays into the hands of the B movie element. Yeah, the they've app, got great quotes on them as well. Like, great brains, the smell. <laughs> Yeah. The smell of brains yeah. is one of the cards. I've got to get to the insert blank yeah. here. <laughs> sent across the map to pick some of it up. Um, and the artwork's brilliant as well. It's like, it's all the Flying Frogs production staff and their mates just dressed up in yeah. like really like, not, I wouldn't say cheap, um, but like just nice makeup effects. And it just looks like a straight some to TV Some cheesy Photoshop movie. filters. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's really nice. 
Um, I would say though that the card play does make for some really peevish zombies. <laughs> so like, because it's quite difficult to actually kill a zombie if yes. you've not got many items. I think that's I mean, because there's only fourteen of them. Yeah. <laughs> so it's not like other games where you're used to just blasting like fifteen out of the way. They do spawn back though. You know, they, they, they can do come back next back, turn. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> you'll really struggle to um, actually like get a kill on a zombie. You're like, yes, I've killed it, and then the zombie just reveals as like, no, just re-roll that dice. Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that that is frustrating. Oh, uh, like the undead hate the living yeah. is one of the cards. <laughs> they really hate them, so re-roll your dice. Exactly. <laughs> There's also a point though where it's really hard to kill a zombie unless you find like a really kind of basic and effectual weapon and then yeah. all of a sudden you send the zombies running I, just, I see a situation where you were going to be overwhelmed by zombies and you found a pitchfork and then, ah! and a welding <laughs> torch in the opposite, or a pair of handcuffs which I killed like 20 zombies I'm still not really sure they, how that was the most brutal uh, weapon versus, I think I've seen yeah, those handcuffs yeah. but as opposed to a revolver where like maybe you'll kill a zombie but most <laughs> yeah. likely you'll just dismiss it most likely you'll run out of bullets and drop it <laughs> sure yeah. I mean in this world a pair of handcuffs is a far more effective zombie killing weapon than a gun well in the event of a zombie apocalypse I'm hitting on Summers <laughs> I, um, guns and ammo thank you very much nope it's for it's for handcuffs and I don't know blunt instruments for me I don't like where that's going <laughs> but yeah I think from a pure fun point of view Moment to moment, I was as invested in your turns, I think, as you were, because yeah. you know the knock-on effect of what it was going to do to me. And there was that the dice rolling definitely works both ways. There were times where you wouldn't roll very well and you couldn't get as far as you wanted to. Mm. And then there were times where I draw a card and all the zombies have rotten bodies, so they just fall apart and I yeah. have to lose like a dice worth of zombies. And so there was all these sort of crazy events yeah. turning up as well. So like moment to moment, turn to turn. It could go either way. Fun yeah. And, yeah. yeah, yeah, and there were a few. There were a few turns. I think we all played a few turns where like a bad dice roll or just kind of situationally. I mean, you can't really do much. But measure for measure, they were yeah. pretty rare. And, and they're over quickly it enough that whistles round yeah. again really quickly. So it really isn't a problem. Yeah, they, those are probably the only moments where the game shows its age. Really, yeah. So yeah. like occasionally, yeah, I agree with that. some of the zombie take that card to like. Um, well, you can take a wound, which is bad, or you can miss a turn, which is bad. Um, so we like to miss a turn. You could have dropped the pitchfork as well. I like could have dropped the pitchfork, but <laughs> it's not happening, is it? But then when you actually decide to miss a turn, you realise, like, bloody hell, the turns go on a little bit. Yeah, okay. Come on, guys, let's speed this up. I want to start murdering zombies again. <laughs> and, um, you know, the role for movement, like you mentioned earlier, and a few other things like that. But um, it's still a great game. It's not... It, it doesn't seem super dated. I think if you're it's a competitive player and you came in like playing this just to win, you know, rather than to sort of experience the, yeah. the story of it, I could see why people would hate it. Yeah, you sure. know. But if you're getting together as a group and you're having like a Halloween party or just you know you just want a fun sort of horror B movie taste. Yeah. For me, I think I enjoyed that more than our last game of Dead of Winter. Yeah, we Dead of Winter gets a bit... So once you get used to the game, because we played it a lot, then you, you kind of like know what Crossroads cards meant come out and you you, you, sound of, you start to feel those story beats. Whereas Last Night on Earth, it's just so unexpected. <laughs> so random. There's no possible way. There's no point trying to predict yeah. that. It's like Twister with zombies. It's like, what, yeah, what is yeah. happening here? Um, but that's the charm, really. I think, and Flying Frog, they have, um, they do have form for making incredibly thematic games. Definitely. Like, is it Brimstone? That, um, Shadows, of Brimstone Shadows of Brimstone, Fortune and Glory, Touch of Evil. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like, yeah, they're all them. solid games, and, and some of them have aging mechanics. But actually, like tonight, you go back, pick them up, yeah. break them out, and it's just a lot of fun. You know, exactly. I, I don't see. I could see this being the same thing in ten years' time, where you, you open it up again. You're not yeah. going in for like. You know the most advanced, like um, balanced game no. ever. You're just having a, a dice rolling fun fest with great card play, yeah. and actually, I think it still hold up. And of course, That's we didn't it. even scratch the surface of all the different decks, the grave weapons, the different like zombies that you can produce. <laughs> we saw yeah. a lot of those like the exploding weapons. zombies and the, the machete wielding oh, the, zombies, the, the, the shower of blood zombies, <laughs> the like, shower of blood who can spray you with his blood and infect you. And, Oh, yeah, there's, and then you had all the unique items, survival tactics, all yeah. these different decks, which again are from all the expansions. Um, but the other thing is, we need to play it again sooner rather than later so that we remember A, the rules, and B, to play the more complex scenarios because they have like yeah. real game changing things where sure. you can 
run through the sewers or burn out the spawn points for the zombies and yeah, all kinds of different. It, options. it did sort of have that feel of like uh, Fire Team Zero to it, didn't it? Like you know, kind of like moving around the map, you know, a lot of like hand management and just keeping an eye on your buds, to make sure they've not been eaten yeah. yet. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's good. I really enjoyed it. I think um, if if Flying Frog were to be released, this or you know do a second edition that obviously need a lot of like dusting up but it's you know it's, it's not it ain't that broke they did do a 10 year or an anniversary edition um but it didn't have like a the possibility to upgrade from a previous version so there was for people like me who've already got it yeah there was, there was no point getting it really yeah, but sure. there are things apparently that it introduces like experience you, you can make the zombies more experienced you can make the players more experienced okay. and they get skills and stuff like that cool. so and that was introduced. There was a, there's like a Timber Peak, I think, expansion, which is like a standalone expansion, yeah. which has all of that and rules for fire and fire spreading and things like that. So there, there are loads more options and there is a more updated version, but we, we were definitely playing like the original first edition stuff with like the expansions there. Yeah. The early expansions. Yeah, you could do you could do worse than pick this one up. Yeah. I don't think it misses much for that, to be honest. I yeah. think that the... Uh, added complexity here and added rules and added fiddliness i'm not sure it would bring an awful lot yeah. i think like you say that uh, some of it's a bit dated it feels a little bit clunky at times but that was fine um and uh i don't know that it needs an awful lot more to get the experience out of it that we've had yeah it probably just needs more ineffective weapons like <laughs> wooden board with nails sticking out sure of it. fence post <laughs> yeah um slightly sharp so what have you had comb. a fence post yeah, I, I believe I, I, I believe Sam, 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 Sam threw away all his weapons <laughs> so he could carry a fence post around. Uh, he he weighed he weighed up his tactical options and then adopted a uh, yeah, it's a decomposing piece of wood. I think it's he could hit them from a space away so he wouldn't get yeah. hurt or something. And it killed a zombie. To be fair, <laughs> did the job. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, rolling pin might be a good one. All right, wicked. Well, that was uh, the last night on Earth. You, you can, I'm sure, you can still pick up a copy of it in Waterstones. <laughs> like, like sort of, it's sort of the game that doesn't seem to ever disappear. It's got to be out of print by now, but who knows? <laughs> um, yeah, great, fun game, and that was um, that was our fiftieth episode of Board wow. Chitless. Wow, incredible! Congratulations to anyone still listening. Yeah, we're... who's managed all 50 episodes. <laughs> <laughs> we do have listeners. I've seen the stats. Either that or there's a lot of redundant iPods out there. <laughs> downloading it every week. Cycling through it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. But, um, Listening for... bots. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, thanks very much for uh, sticking around with us and listening to us. We do hope that you'll join us on our Facebook group and also check us out on Twitter at board underscore chitless and give us a like or comment on SoundCloud or iTunes. And we'll be back next week for more board gaming loveliness. So thanks very much for joining us, Anthony. And My pleasure. We'll see you guys next week. Bye. Bye. Bye-bye.